This is just a short addendum to the Zoroaster fake scholarship video. I want to show it in the Greek because unlike Zoroaster, I can actually read the Greek. Unlike Zoroaster, I do my homework and I want to show you what the difference is. There is also some difference in the understanding of the words too. Okay. This is the text that is in Bible works. It's a little bit different from the William Whiston translation that um, I put in the video description so you could find the reference in the hardback. Um, it's really a paperback. I have the book right here on my shelf open in the same place. But this is the Bible works version and the text reads pretty much the same. But I want you to see that if Zoroaster was a decent scholar, which he's obviously not, he wouldn't just content himself with looking at the translation. He would go to the original Greek. Otherwise, he has no right to comment on Josephus or anybody else. Because when you're reading in a translation, you don't know if the translation you've got is okay. And if you can't compare the translation to the original, honey, you better not make any comments at all. Because there are a lot of brain outs out there like me who actually know what we're doing. Okay? So look, this is saying this is the word for Jesus. And this is the post positive gar. Okay? So it's Jesus, this is the literal Greek now. Jesus therefore who, one of the son of Ananias. Okay? Ananias. This is how you would change in Greek how you would say a Hebrew name. That's first name. This is his last name, son of Ananias. Okay, I'm having trouble with my mouse because I'm recording. Son of Ananias. That's his last name. That's not son of Joseph. It's a different Jesus. Okay? So our boy Zoroaster just he flunks. Anything he says you can't listen to because he doesn't do his homework. A person who is lazy and doesn't do his homework, his opinion is worthless. Okay? Period. Alright? Then this is not saying a plebeian, although the, the Romans would read it that way. It just mean, it means that he's, he's just a regular guy. There's nothing special about him. He doesn't have a special office. He doesn't have a special role. He doesn't have any special authority. He's just a common person. Okay? Idiotum. And you can see um, you can see in the lower window the Greek lexicons there. Okay? So you know what I'm talking about. It isn't, strictly speaking, what the Romans would use for plebeian, but it has the same connotation meaning he's nobody, nobody of importance. That's the opposite of what Jesus the Christ was. Jesus the Christ was son of David, which meant he was royal family, and even the crucifixion was Jesus king of the Jews. That was what Pilate put on the cross, okay? Because he had to register a temple as a son of David. That's what made the Jesus the Christ so controversial in his day was that he is, the Messiah has to be king of the Jews, okay? And that was what the dispute was with the Jews, okay? He had to register a temple. The one thing the Jews never denied when they were disputing with him was that he was son of David. They were disputing whether he was a legitimate son of David, not that he was son of David. They knew he was son of Mary. They were even insulting him in John 8 for being an illegitimate son of Mary. So they knew that he was royal house of David. This guy, by contrast, is idios, just anybody. Okay, then the next word here is hagroikas. Okay, and that just means, it, it really isn't, it, it's not exactly husbandman. It means, it means somebody who doesn't know anything. Okay. A nobody, kind of like the way we talk about Hitler. All right, because this is a guy who claimed to be Messiah. This guy here is somebody else claiming to be Messiah. What Josephus is doing is trying to explain how the war came about that culminated in Masada. This is another false Christ, 
and he was nobody as distinct from the, the Jesus of the Bible. And he was just, he was considered a bumpkin, a country bumpkin would be the best way to translate Hagroikos, ha okay? And then this is just saying in the fourth year before the war, right there. That's in the fourth year before the war. And then Josephus is getting a little bit, uh, what do you want to call it, hyperbole here. When Jerusalem was at its greatest per period of prosperity, okay, this is under the time of Nero. Jerusalem was not under its greatest period of prosperity at the time of Nero. Nero was, was imposing all kinds of taxes, which is what culminated really in the rebellion, but I digress. The point is, is that this description here in the Greek, idioton, okay, that means just, you know, a, a nobody, okay? And then he reinforces that by saying, hagroikas, a country bumpkin would be the best way to translate that, okay? So I'm sorry that I had to do this, but I just want to show first Zoroaster is too dumb to live, and or, or he's being dishonest. And he's certainly not doing his homework because the translation he's using, he didn't even bother to check whether or not it translated these two words properly, which they didn't, okay? All right? To say common man and husbandman is not the proper translation. As you see, when you look at the lexicons down in the lower section of the screen, okay? And it's, it's actually like a swear, almost a swear word. It's an epithet. This is an epithet. See Liddell Scott down here? Clownish, boorish, okay? Country bumpkin. That is using which dictionary? I don't know which, which lexicon it's using. Oh, Liddell Scott also. But see, Liddell Scott here, clownish, boorish, I'm not used to using Bible Works 8, sorry. It's not doing it right. Okay, clownish and boorish. See, down here, where my cursor is, if I click on it, it's going to show the whole lexicon. All right, see where it says, well, now it's not showing it at all. Oh, sorry. I'm having trouble with the thing. There. See where it says clownish and boorish right here? The term is actually used as an epithet. But I see clownish, boorish, rude. Country bumpkin would be good modern English. All right, he didn't even check to make sure what this meant. And he didn't check to make what this sure what this meant. And he doesn't even know Hebrew naming convention. So Zoroaster, you're a fake scholar, and anybody listening to you shouldn't be listening to you because you're dishonest or stupid. Take your pick.